Hello everyone, my name is Jure and today I will present to you a part of our work on learning surrogates of a radiative transfer model for the Sentinel 5P satellite as part of a collaboration between the European Space Agency and Josef Stefan Institute. Sentinel 5 Precursor is an Earth observation satellite that was launched in 2017. It features the tropospheric monitoring instrument, Tropomi, a spectrometer that provides global information on air quality and greenhouse gases, such as carbon monoxide, methane and water vapor. In order to extract information on the concentration of trace gases, a retrieval algorithm needs to be run. One of the most popular ones is Ramotech, which is based on Lintran, a radiative transfer model that simulates spectra based on atmospheric and other parameters. The process of extracting um, trace gases is very computationally expensive, which is why there is a lot of interest in machine, le machine learning models that would help speed up this process. One way to do this is through the use of so-called surrogate models. These are efficient approximations of computationally complex models or simulations. In our case, the Lintran simulation takes atmospheric parameters as input and provides the output of spectra. Forward surrogate models learn to predict the output of the simulation based on the parameters. We are also interested in the so-called backward sur surrogate models, which learn to predict which simulation parameters would produce a given output. This is particularly useful in estimating the simulation parameters or the parameters of a physical model based on measurements. The data set what we use was constructed specifically for this purpose. It was generated through using Ramotech and is composed of 50,000 samples. The input dimensions contain the atmospheric parameters such as albedo, optical depth, and the profiles of temperature, pressure, and various gas concentrations. In total, there are 125 numeric attributes. On the output, each sample contains a spectrum that belongs to the shortwave infrared band. It is composed of 834 numeric values that correspond to different wavelengths. In our initial exploration of the dataset, we noticed that three of the atmospheric parameters feature have constant values, which we removed. The remaining have distributions that are either B-model or heavily ta tailed unimodel. We applied standard scaling to each of the attributes. On, on the side of the spectral data, the distributions are predominantly exponential, which is why we applied a logarithmic transformation followed by standard scaling. The, the data is still very high dimensional in both of the spaces which is why we believed that methods of dimensionality reduction would be crucial to pre good predictive models. One of the most common methods for dimensionality reduction is principal component analysis. This method aims to find linear transformations into lower dimensional subspaces that maximize the variance in the data. Pictured here are two scree plots which depict the cumulative variance explained by a given number of principal components. This can give us valuable insight into the intrinsic dimensionality of the data. On the side of the atmospheric parameters, we can see that in order to explain 99% of variance in the data, we need about 45 principal components out of 122 dimensions. On the side of spectral data, only two principal components out of 834 dimensions are needed in order to explain 99% of variance in the data. This is an extremely low 
intrinsic dimensionality, which means that dimensionality reduction methods might indeed be beneficial to the purpose. The following scheme shows the architecture of the framework for learning surrogates we developed for this problem. The atmospheric parameter space and the spectral space are both independently pre-processed and dimensionally reduced. This way we get lower dimensional representations of each of the spaces. Prediction models are trained to map between these lower dimensional representations. Forward surrogate models learn to predict the representation of spectral data from the representation of the atmospheric data. Backward models do the opposite. After a prediction model makes predictions, we, the predictions are expressed in the lower dimensional representation space. We need to inversely transform them back into the original space. This means that we are limited to methods of dimensionality reduction that are capable of performing an inverse transformation. In this work, we focus on investigating the impact of employing principal component analysis and autoencoders as methods of dimensionality reduction. As a prediction models, we use simple, shallow, feedforward neural networks. The, the data is split into a training, a validation, and test set. It, an autoencoder is a recently popular method of performing dimensionality reduction. It is a type of neural network that aims to reproduce the input on the output after passing through a bottleneck in the architecture of the network. After training, the network is split into two. The encoder, the first part, is used to map into the lower dimensional space, and the decoder is used for the inverse transformation. A concern when using autoencoders is that the network would, could learn to memorize the entire dataset. To combat this, various methods of regularization are used. In our case, we use denoising autoencoders, where we add artificial Gaussian noise to the input, which forces the network to generalize and learn meaningful features. First, we investigate the reconstruction error of denoising autoencoders in PCA. We are answering the question, how well can we reproduce the original data from a lower dimensional representation? As a metric, we use root mean squared error of the reconstruction. The table below features three different three autoencoders with varying levels of added Gaussian noise, as well as PCA. In the case of atmospheric parameters, the best performer is an autoencoder with no added noise. In the case of spectral data, all three autoencoders perform similarly, and they all outperform PCA. Secondly, we move to supervised learning. We employ a shallow neural network with two hidden layers to map between dimensionally reduced spaces. We are again comparing the three different autoencoders, PCA and baseline. The baseline is the mean of the targets on the training set. This time the metric of choice is root made, the root mean squared error of prediction. In the case of forward models, the best performer uses an autoencoder with a little bit of added noise. It outperforms PCA, and both of them significantly outperform the baseline. In the case of backward models, all three autoencoders, as well as PCA, have similar performance, and they all outperform the baseline, although not as dramatically as in the case of forward models. In the previous comparisons, we used 45 dimensions for the representation of the atmospheric parameter space and two dimensions for the representation of the spectral data. These values correspond to 99% variance explained when using PCA. Next, we wanted to investigate the effect of using different dimensionalities of representations on the quality of prediction. In the case of the forward model, the best performer uses 
principal component analysis for dimensionality reduction and uses 102 dimensions on the atmospheric parameter data and 50 dimensions on the spectral data. It, it outperforms not only models with dimensionality reduction, but also mo the model with no dimensionality reduction at all. In the case of ba the backrip model, the picture is the same. Both, for both the forward and the backrip model, the surrogate model significant, significantly outperforms the baseline. Finally, we wanted to take the best performing combinations and confirm our results. So we used 102 dimensions for the atmospheric parameters and 50 dimensions for the spectral data. We employed tenfold cross-validation and computed the coefficient of determination. We compared the best model using dimensionality reduction as well as a predictive model with no dimensionality reduction. In the case of the forward model, but the results are very good and dimensionality reduction is not able to offer any improvements. In the case of the backrip model, however, the model using no dimensionality reduction reaches an R squared of 0 0.9. Adding PCA improves the performance to 0 0.97, so a significant improvement. The conclusions we draw from this study is that the data set can be modeled very accurately. Dimensionality reduction improves the performance for backward models, but not for forward models, which are already very good. Dimensionality reduction also improves the speed of prediction by about one third. The purpose of surrogate models is to improve computational efficiency, and this is indeed achieved. achieved. Making predictions for the sample of 5,000 points takes the surrogate models less than one second and would take the original simulation several hours or days. However, the very low intrinsic dimensionality of the spectral data indicates the possibility of an artifact in the setup of the dataset that might be related to the sampling of certain parameters. In further work, we wish to investigate this possibility of this artifact further. We also intend to test and evaluate other models for prediction, such as ensembles of regression trees. We also intend to employ a more rigorous hyperparameter optimization. Furthermore, the the resulting surrogates will be implemented implemented into the trace gas retrieval scheme and this uncertainty of surrogates at the trace level will be able to be evaluated. Once this is done, we will be able to assess the trade-off between the computational speed-up and the loss of accuracy that results in using surrogate models in the trace gas retrieval scheme. Further down the road, surrogates of more complex physical models for the atmosphere might be employed that were out of reach at the moment because of computational complexity.